It is very important to know the difference between oxygenation and ventilation, as these are two separate yet equally important processes. Let's first start by taking a look at what oxygenation actually is. Oxygenation is the process of oxygen taken into the lungs, diffused passively into the blood, and then distributed throughout the rest of the body for the body to use. The ultimate goal is to make sure the amount of oxygen the body is using is less than the amount that is being delivered. This will ensure that the body always has enough oxygen. One way to increase the amount of oxygen being delivered to the patient is through an oxygenation device. An oxygenation device uses a continuous flow of oxygen and is delivered into the patient's airway. From the airway, it passively diffuses into the alveoli and eventually into the blood. Oxygenation devices, such as nasal cannula or an oxygen face mask, are an open system. This means that it's open to the atmosphere and allows oxygen to leak into the atmosphere. A major disadvantage is that pressure can now, it cannot be built up. Without pressure, we cannot actively inflate the patient's lungs, which means we cannot remove carbon dioxide. Also, without pressure, we cannot stent open the patient's airway in order to relieve upper airway obstruction. Ventilation is the removal of carbon dioxide from the blood into the alveoli and eventually out into the atmosphere. The ultimate goal of ventilation is to remove carbon dioxide from the blood. In order for ventilation to occur, pressure must be built up within the lungs, allowing them to inflate. Once they're inflated, carbon dioxide can then move from the blood into the lungs alveoli. The elastic force of the lungs then forces carbon dioxide from the lungs out into the atmosphere. In order for this to occur, we need a closed system. A closed system is essentially what the supernova is. The supernova seal has a nice seal around the nose. This prevents any leakage of gas into the atmosphere. Now that the system's closed, pressure can be built up within the mask, which then eventually gets built up within the patient's lungs. This allows the lungs to actively inflate, and again, for carbon dioxide to move from the blood into the alveoli, back out into the atmosphere. Another advantage for having a continuous positive pressure being delivered to the patient's airway is that it can help relieve upper airway obstruction by stenting open the soft palate. Examples of devices that are ventilation devices would be the supernova, an anesthesia mask, and a CPAP mask. Essentially any device that allows positive pressure to be built up with inside the patient. Apneic oxygenation and apneic ventilation is the process of continuously flowing oxygen into the patient's lungs, even when they're not breathing. Here's the physiology behind it. If you have a continuous flow of oxygen going into the patient's lungs, that means the lungs stay open, i.e. the alveoli stay open. Oxygen can diffuse into the blood at a rate of 250 mLs per minute. Again, since the alveoli are open, carbon dioxide can move from the blood into the alveoli. However, this only occurs at a rate of about 10 mLs per minute. This differential of 240 mLs per minute creates a vacuum-like effect that continuously pulls oxygen into the blood. The way it does this is through the continuous supply here in the airway. Oxygen continues to flow down, and we have this net differential creating a vacuum-like effect always pulling oxygen into the blood. It is also important to understand that there are three situations where it is not recommended to use either apneic oxygenation or apneic ventilation. The reason is because it's not effective. The first situation are on obese patients. Now the reason for this is because of what we call compression atelectasis, where the amount of pressure that the abdominal contents are applying on the lungs is greater than the pressure that is being delivered from the patient's airway into the patient's lungs. Second, upper airway obstruction. 
reason why apneic oxygenation and apneic ventilation is contraindicated in this scenario is because it doesn't apply a positive pressure high enough to stent open that upper airway obstruction and allow oxygen to continuously be delivered into the lungs. Therefore, with an upper airway obstruction, oxygen ends up coming back out the mouth. The third place is if a patient is desaturating. The reason why apneic ventilation would be contraindicated in this situation is because it means that it's not working. Now, for all three of these situations, the recommendation is to resort back to a device that can apply positive pressure ventilation, such as the supernova device. Next, let's discuss full face mask ventilation technique. Historically, we're taught to create a C and E. As you can see here in the picture, the C is created using the thumb and index finger. The E is created by using your other three fingers and holding the mandible nice and tight. Now what we're taught is to actually lift the face to the mask. And the reason for this is if you push the mask down into the face, it causes the jaw to fall forward, which worsens a patient's upper airway obstruction by allowing the tongue to fall back into the soft palate and the soft palate to fall back into the retropharyngeal space. One major disadvantage to full face mask ventilation is that it's difficult to create a seal. First reason why it's difficult to create a seal is because the jaw is a mobile structure. And again, it's hard to keep the jaw from moving and the mouth closed. And anytime the jaw moves forward, it worsens the upper airway obstruction. Second reason it's difficult is because there's a lot of soft tissue around the mouth, such as the cheeks. Since these structures are soft, it's very difficult to push the mask down and to seal. And the third is that it's hard to lift the face to the mask, especially in patients that are obese or morbidly obese, where their jaws and their mouths are pretty heavy. Next, let's discuss the benefits of nasal ventilation. The first of which is that it's easy to hold. As you can see here in the picture, the clinician has one thumb which is pressing down on the nasal chamber. Another technique is to use the palm of the hand. Now, the reason why it's easier to hold is because it's easy to create a seal. As you can see in the image over here on the right, all the structures around the nose are solid structures. They're not soft tissue structures like in full face mask ventilation. This creates a very easy surface to push down against. And in fact, that's another advantage and difference from nasal ventilation to full face mask ventilation. Nasal ventilation, you're actually taught to push down hard into the mask, into those solid structures, as opposed to full face mask ventilation, where you're taught to lift the patient's face to the mask. So what's the clinical problem? It's the sequence of events associated with sedation medications. When we give sedation, it causes both our muscles to relax and our brain to relax, which results in two life-threatening complications. The first is known as upper airway obstruction. The second, respiratory depression. Let's start with upper airway obstruction. When we give sedation, it causes the muscles of our airways to relax. As shown here, this causes our tongue to fall into our retropharyngeal space and obstruct it. Now, oxygen can't get into our lungs, which means it can't get into our blood and results in a complication known as oxygen desaturation, which is essentially low blood oxygen levels. When our brains relax, it tells our body to not breathe anymore. This is known as hypoventilation. If we can't draw oxygen into our lungs, they collapse. When, you're on, when your lungs collapse, oxygen therefore can't get into the blood. And again, it results in a complication known as oxygen desaturation. Now, oxygen desaturation can also eventually lead to pneumonia if the lungs are collapsed significantly enough, cardiac arrest, and potentially death. Let's go over the clinical solution for upper airway obstruction. Basically, it's nasal CPAP, where CPAP stands for continuous positive airway pressure. Essentially, when we apply our nasal mask and connect it to a 
a positive pressure delivering device, it creates positive pressure within the airway, specifically the nasal pharynx, and it acts as a pneumatic stent, which lifts the soft palate off of the retropharyngeal wall and creates a patency here that allows oxygen to continue to flow into the lungs and our lungs to stay inflated. Now, typically what we use for the amount of positive pressure is between 10 to 20 centimeters of water. So not only can this help prevent desaturation, but allows for continuous oxygenation and the lungs to stay inflated. A major advantage of applying nasal ventilation is that it allows us to ventilate through the nose even while the clinician requires access to the patient's mouth. Another advantage is that since these patients stop breathing, typically it causes atelectasis where the lungs begin to collapse. Atelectasis, as we know, can lead to pneumonia and potentially cardiac arrest or death. By applying intermittent positive pressure, it allows the lungs to actively inflate and deflate like normal. And is actually the treatment for atelectasis. Let's discuss the features of the supernova. I'm gonna start out with the supernova's nasal chamber. Some of the key features are one, it's anesthesia port. Two, the nasal seal that we have. Three, these duct bill valves. A fourth feature that we'll go over is the Velcro strap. And finally, we'll go into the supplemental oxygen port. The first unique feature we're going to go over is the location of the supernova's anesthesia port. Typical masks, the anesthesia port is located in the middle of the mask and extends vertically. Now, if you wanted to use that device during intubation, it would get in the clinician's view of the airway. Therefore, the supernova's anesthesia port was specifically designed to not obstruct the view of the airway. It's located above the nasal bridge and is parallel with the face. This allows for continuous ventilation during laryngoscopy. The next unique feature are the nasal chamber's duct bill valves. And they serve two functions. The first is they are one-way valves. When you try and exhale against them, they close. If you were to insert something such as the oral chamber into the duct bill valves, they then open and would allow for bilateral flow. The second function is that they act as attachment sites for other accessories. Another unique feature for the nasal chamber is the nasal chamber seal. It's very thin, unlike typical anesthesia masks, which have a balloon and is pretty thick. The reason why this nasal chamber seal is thin is so that it doesn't contact up against the nares and block airflow going into the nose. The supernova also has a supplemental oxygen port, which serves as two functions. The first is that it allows an additional 15 liters of oxygen to be flowing into the mask. You'd want to use this if a patient has an excessive leak out of the mouth. This will allow us to compensate for that leak by adding additional flow. The other unique function is that it can serve as a supplemental oxygen mask for transport. Typically at the end of the case, the anesthesiologist will throw their anesthesia mask away and pick up another supplemental oxygen device, either a nasal cannula or an oxygen face mask. The supernova allows you to use the same mask. Now we just connect the oxygen tubing to the supernova supplemental oxygen port and we can transport the patient to PACU. A final unique feature of the supernova's nasal chamber is the Velcro strap. This will help the clinician increase their workflow. Because the Velcro strap will be pre-attached, it allows for easy access and very quick setup. Shown here is the supernova's first accessory, known as the oral chamber. The oral chamber has two proboscises, which are essentially openings. When the oral chamber is inserted into the nasal chamber, these proboscises allow the duckbill valves to open up. And this allows for bilateral flow through the nose and the mouth, essentially acting as a full face mask. The other feature here is similar to the nasal chambers feature. It also has a Velcro strap. This will allow for hands-free 
full face mask ventilation.